What's up, CLC? Yeah! Good to see you guys. Super excited to spend a few minutes with you today as we continue to look intently at the Word of God and to see one of my favorite stories in the Gospels of all time that Jesus tells in the book of Luke chapter 15. Last week, we went deep into it, and this week our goal is to take another in-depth look at this chapter and see what God's trying to show us through so much symbolism throughout this story. In Luke chapter 15, it tells us that the focus of the Father, God, is to look for that which is lost. God, he's searching for the lost. And the same is true today. No matter where you find yourself, God is looking for you. He's looking for me. He's searching for us. And that's what these stories are all about. Here's a quick recap. So we saw that there's a father with two sons and Jesus is letting us know that one of these sons tells his dad, hey, I want my inheritance now. I, I don't wanna wait for you to die. Give me what's mine now. Dad, he does it. Son goes off to a foreign land, wastes all his money, ends up in the lowest point of his life. And he finally comes home and as he's a far way off, his dad sees him and his dad freaks out. He's like, yo, my son is home. He doesn't even let his son finish the speech that he prepared to tell him. And the dad decides to celebrate. He tells him, hey, we're about to throw a big party. Make sure you go get the rope for my son, get a ring for my son and get some sandals on his feet. And that's what I wanna focus on in the next few minutes today, is what happens in verse 22 of Luke chapter 15 and beyond. What you need to see starts right here. It reads like this. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring on his fingers, get sandals for his feet, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost and now he is found. And so the party began. It would be really easy for you and I just to breeze over those verses and be like, oh, oh, that's cool. That's cool, they're all good. Everybody's happy now. But there is so much more that's going on in just these few verses that we need to see if we're gonna understand the depth and the beauty of this story. Because here's the truth. Each of the gifts that the father gives to his son are significant. They each mean something. Actually, what they communicate is how the father sees his son. Remember the speech? Father, I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned against you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. What he was about to say before his dad cut him off was, make me like one of your hired servants. He's looking at his own life and he's thinking, yo, because of what I've done, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Because of the mistakes that I've, I've made and the places that I've been, because of the things that I've done, just make me like one of your servants. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The father cuts him off and he orders the people to bring three different gifts. So let's take a look at each of these gifts and the symbolism behind them. First up, a robe. Yeah, I like this robe. It's actually my mom's robe and I can feel the hate coming through the screen right now, letting me know that I know it's pink, but it's pink and it's fluffy and it's comfy, so don't hate. I remember back when I was a kid, one of my favorite memories was we went to a really nice hotel and I, I went looking through the closet and there was this bathrobe. It wasn't pink, it was white and it was like way too big. But I threw that thing on, wrapped it up and I walked around the whole hotel like I owned the place. I must have looked absolutely ridiculous. But the truth is, it was comfy. And I liked how, how I could just be all snuggly up in it. It's kind of like maybe you have a Snuggie at home. You know what I'm talking about. But the truth is, what this robe or what the robe communicates to us is covering. Not only does the robe communicate covering, but what that covering means is that you are forgiven. And that's what it means to be covered. It should take our minds all the way back to the book of Genesis, when sin first entered into the world, when Adam and Eve willfully disobeyed God. And their first inclination is to cover themselves. They sew some fig leaves together and they cover themselves. They're embarrassed, they're ashamed. They feel guilty for what they've done. And then what happens? God enters the garden and he makes them a covering. In fact, scripture would tell us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. So God makes these coverings out of animal skins. They're covered because of that shedding of blood and God is communicating to them, you are forgiven. It should take our minds to the cross of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, his blood was shed for the forgiveness of sin. And when you return home to your heavenly father, that's what he does. He covers you because you're forgiven. And that's who you truly are. 
And that's what this father in the parable is saying. He's speaking identity over his son. He's saying, listen, regardless of where you've been, regardless of what you've done, I don't care about your past mistakes. What you need to understand is that you are mine and that you are forgiven. Each and every one of us, when we decide to come home to our heavenly father, when we step into that relationship with Jesus, we're immediately covered. We are forgiven and that's who we truly are. And I wanna remind you today, I just wanna speak identity over you, no matter where you are, what you've been, what you've done, your heavenly father, he longs for you. He longs to forgive you. And if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is your identity. You are forgiven. Now for our second gift. A ring. The second gift that the father gives his son is the gift of a ring. Remember, each one of them are significant and they each say something about how the father sees his son. So he gives him a ring. And right here, we have to go back, back, back to the beginning of the story. The younger son comes to his father and says, give me my share of the inheritance. Now, what he's basically saying is that I don't want to have anything to do with you. In this time, culturally, everyone in the family would have worn the same ring. It would have either had the family crest or the family seal on it. And when he goes to his father, he says, listen, just give me my money. I don't want to be a part of this family. And I have this picture personally in my mind of the younger son taking his ring off with the family seal on it and slamming it down on the living room table and saying, I don't want to be a part of this family anymore. You can picture it literally. And when he comes back home, he doesn't have that ring on his finger anymore because he already bounced. And so what do we see? We see the father send a servant to get the ring and bring it back to his son. If you think about it, this is still true today. The ring represents covenant. It represents relationship. The reason that my parents, that they wear a ring on their ring fingers is because they're married. They're in a covenant relationship with one another and the ring symbolizes family. When this son comes home and the father says, go and get the ring and put it on his finger, what he's saying is, you're my family, you're my son. Not only are you covered and forgiven, but by this ring, I'm telling you that you're family. I don't care what's happened to you up to this point. I don't care how you offended me. I don't care what you've said. I don't care how you've turned your back on me. I have never given up on you. You will always be family. You are my son. And so many people think that because of choices that they've made or things that they've done or maybe even things that have been done to them, they, they struggle and they struggle to see themselves as a daughter or son of a good father, of your heavenly father. And so often we think, yo, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I'm not worthy to be called your daughter. But in this story, the father puts the ring back on his son's finger and says, you will always be family. And the same is true when you and I step into a relationship with Jesus. Not only are we forgiven, but we're family. There's a seal over you. God says, this one is mine. She is my daughter. Him, that's my son. And you're a part of God's family. When you step into a relationship with Jesus, there is a seal on your life. You step into the family of God forever. And that's not just a family that you could ever be unadopted from. You are a part of God's family. That's who you are. So don't disqualify yourself. Don't think that you've done something or you can't be in a relationship with your heavenly father. No, God longs to spend time with his children. And I just wanna speak identity over you today. Not only are you forgiven in a relationship with Jesus, but you're also family. That's your identity. That's who you are. And that's what happens when you come home. God says you're family. And finally, for the last gift, it's one of the most important ones and just as symbolic as the rest of them sandals, or as we call them down here in the 954, slide. Show you how to get it, it go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot up, right foot slide. These gifts might not seem like a lot to us because shoes and sandals, they can seem so insignificant. But I have the picture of the younger son who's been poor and penniless, and he's had a rough time with life the, the past year, or God knows how long he's been gone. And I picture him feeding the pigs and finally being so hungry that he just can't do it anymore. And he comes home and his clothes are tattered. He's probably filthy. He's been working hard. His shoes, who knows? He probably doesn't even have any on at this point. He's barefoot. And he comes home needing to be covered. It looks terrible. And his dad sees him 
And his father says this, get sandals and put them on his feet. This time, slaves and servants, they didn't wear shoes. They couldn't afford them. Only free people wore shoes. And when the father says, get sandals and put them on his feet, what he's communicating is, you're not a slave or a servant to anyone. You're a free man. These sandals communicate that you are free. The father in each of these gifts, he says, you're forgiven, you're covered, put a robe on him, put the ring on him, you're family, but the sandals on his feet because he's free. This perhaps is the most important part of our identity that we so often miss, we, we fail to understand it. A lot of us understand, yes, we're forgiven and we understand that we're a part of the family of God. Those things are incredible. And those things are so beautiful, but so often we miss the fact that in our truest identity, we're free people. God says, you are free. You are not a slave and you're not a servant to anyone. God has a full and abundant life that he desires for each of us to live. You don't have to be a slave to your sin anymore. You don't have to be a slave to the idea that you can't come back to God. God desires to give you freedom. Each of these gifts, they communicate something significant and they speak to our identity and a relationship with Jesus. When you cross that line in faith, when you give your heart to Christ, and you come home to your heavenly father, God says of you and I that you are forgiven, you are family, and you are free. I'm gonna pray for you today that you would be reminded of who you truly are. It's only when we understand how our heavenly father sees us that we can live the life that we've been called to live. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we come before you, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus and the reality that he gives us a clearer image of who you are. And Lord, that he shared stories with us to understand every component of how much you care for us, Lord. I pray for every student watching this, Lord, that they would understand that they are forgiven. Lord, that they're free. Lord, that they're a part of your family. Father, I pray that those who feel far, that they would suddenly realize that you're waiting and longing for them to come close. Lord, we thank you. You're worthy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.